Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Welcome to the Up and Down Smiling Show where we talk about real life but we don't take life too seriously and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen and we have Brittany here and today we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship. Do the intro. entrepreneur is what you consider yourself right and yeah. I am super inspired by her journey as I have her in my life on a personal level and I'm so thankful that you're here to share you know your story and your experience and so yeah tell us a little bit about what your journey has been like crazy is the best word to describe it so I have been an entrepreneur now technically for five years. My first entrepreneurial venture, I wrote a children's book in 2015 called The Adventures of Buster and Duval. It was about my dog. I uh, had no idea what I was doing. Literally not a clue. I just knew that I could write and I was like, we'll figure it out as we go. But through that process, I think I just became a bit more empowered on like creating. It was sort of the first time I was able to create something and put it out into the world and physically see the results of that. So uh, that's always... Uh, sort of inspiring and just sort of spark something inside of me. I guess it's also, you guys should know, I come from an entrepreneurial family. So parents are entrepreneurs. So I always grew up around that sort of energy and knew that that was going to be sort of a path that I took at some point. But in 2016 was really when I like dove off the cliff and uh, quit my full-time job to start not only a business, but a nonprofit business. So when you ask how the journey has been, again, incredibly crazy because um, navigating running a business is hard, but then you add that additional layer of like nonprofit and building a team and like doing good and it, it, it's, it's a lot of work. Can you talk, share a little bit about what Gray Matter Experience is? Gray Matter is a nonprofit uh, currently based in Chicago that helps black high school students learn about entrepreneurship and gives them the tools, resources, and access to start their own businesses. So it started sort of with this ethos of of being able to earlier train black and brown folks to understand entrepreneurship and understand how to generate wealth for themselves in hopes that over time we start to see that translated in our community through economic development. So that was sort of the ethos and it's grown from a 10 person pilot program to now we've serviced over 300 students across the city, which is nuts. And I've been a solo founder for three years and like six months of the entire four years that <laughs> the business has been around. What's that solo founder? solo entrepreneurship experience like because I, I I feel like I know what you're gonna say it's just really kind of lonely and challenging but I'd love to hear like your experience I think those are sort of the negative sides of it uh it is very lonely um because you're doing so much and moving at such a pace that it's hard if somebody else is not in the same space to empathize, be able to give you advice, like help support you in a way that like keeps you mentally sane. Challenging in the sense that you're doing every single thing on your own, whether you've had experience doing it before or not. So it's a lot of like learning while doing. which I think leads to the positive in that I can say over the past four years, I have grown more and done more than I ever have in my whole life. And so it's really given the, me the ability to really A, understand more about a lot of different things, but also on a, a sort of introspective level, understand what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And like at what point that I can start outsourcing things, the things that like absolutely terrify me or give me extreme anxiety when I go to do them, are just like, those are not things that allow me to operate in my gifts. So it's allowed me to start identifying other people to do those and sort of outsource that. But in total, it's been, I would say, it's helped me to grow as a person, be having to go through all of the things alone that I had to go through, as opposed to like starting out with the team. I think I, it, things would have transformed differently had I started out with all the resources that I need. So while it's been challenging, I guess, in a weird kind of way, I'm grateful that I've had to like struggle through it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like you've learned so much through this time. Mm -hmm. I keep reminding myself when, when times are a little bit more challenging, it's like I would not know all the things I know today. I would not have all this experience yeah. if, I didn't, if I didn't do these things. Yeah, and I think for me, that, that piece of it is important and helpful because I am always one of those folks. I like to preach from experience and not from theory. And mm -hmm. for me to be able to say like, no, I actually did build this from scratch and you can do the same, knowing that, especially for a lot of Black 
black and brown folks, they go through the same period of like not having resources, not having staff, not having the ability to sort of tap into networks that they need to be able to speak from experience and tell folks like, no, this is something that you can't overcome. It's all temporary, et cetera. Just adds a little bit more credibility and validity to sort of the coaching and things that I do, even outside of gray matter and some of the other things that I do. Right. Cause you're, you do like consulting, like coaching and stuff like that as well, right? I do as many things as my brain and body will allow me to do while I am childless and like don't have all the responsibilities, wifeless, uh, <laughs> that, that uh, before I uh, get into all those responsibilities, I'm really trying to like maximize my time of like being single, having capability, flexibility to like do more so that hopefully by the time I get to that point, I can retire and just sit back and kick my feet up. <laughs> You're just always hustling. You're like always doing something and it's super inspiring. It's really weird because I don't like working. I absolutely hate working <laughs> like i think it is the dumbest thing that we do as a society but i, I again i understand that in order to get to where i want to be like i'm trying to put in those hours and that work now and the great thing is a lot of the things that i do all flow into one another so it's not like i'm having to sort of turn my brain off and then go do this thing or turn my brain off and go do another thing. They all are sort of in line to sort of build this broader ecosystem of entrepreneurship and resources and support for folks. And so it, it does make it a little easier for me to do all the things that I'm able to do. Thank God. Yeah, they all kind of like support each other. Mm -hmm. It all makes sense. Yeah, for sure. The biggest challenge has been running a nonprofit as a black woman. I worked for a nonprofit. They do similar work to what we do. And the owner of that nonprofit was a white Jewish guy. I watched him for three years, like be able to fundraise so easily, walk into these spaces and people are just like throwing money and throwing resources. And I was like, oh, well, if this is how it works, why would I not start a nonprofit? And I guess I was a bit naive in not factoring in like, you're a black woman. So no girl, that's not your story. And so that has been extremely challenging in trying to navigate through how do I get the money, the resources, the support that is needed to really build this organization into something that is impactful for the people and communities that we serve if nobody's paying attention to me. And so that that piece on top of one of the funny things, and I always tell people this, is it doesn't matter how many news features, television shows, media features that you get, those things do not equate two dollars like just being honest like you may get paid for a speaking engagement here and there but visibility does not equal uh profitability and so like the cool thing is like everybody wants me to speak on their what you call it's um but the the fact of the matter is at the end of the day it's a lot of cheering from the stands and less like support so for me i think the biggest thing was like doing it all alone, like truly, like I didn't have a mentor all four years. Everything that I learned was from doing, from doing my own research, from literally just asking a ton of questions to a ton of people around me because there was nobody who was really just gonna step in and be like, I got you girl, like I see you doing the work. Now, thankfully that is happening. And with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, Gray Matter and myself are getting a lot more visibility and supports and my inbox is out of control. But it just always makes me think like, where would the organization and where would I be now if we had that level of support from the beginning? And so to me, it's just been challenging to see how people talk about and advocate for black and brown communities, but then don't do anything to put resources and dollars where their mouth is. And, and just seeing sort of some of these larger organizations that continue to get funding, visibility, celebrity endorsements, et cetera, et cetera. And you have all of these community organizations and businesses that are on the ground actually doing the work that's fueling sort of that community development and they get nothing. And so that to me, I think has been the biggest sort of challenge that has affected both me personally and the business and being broke. <laughs> being broke.
being broke has definitely been one of, if not the largest challenge of this entire game. And I don't think people talk enough about that. And again, going back to the whole media thing, I don't care that I was in essence. I may not have been able to pay my rent that month, or I may have had to borrow money from someone. And it was, a, you know, choosing, do I pay my rent or do I put it into the business so the business can continue to grow because I believe in this thing. And so I don't think that's talked about enough. And I think people think because they see you out here like grinding and hustling, like, oh man, she must be paid. No, y'all. I have been brokeity broke, 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 broke. Uh, almost this entire time of running gray matter. Luckily, tides are turning, but that has been tough. Yeah, and that can be like really trying on your mental health. We try so hard to not like tie our financial stability or whatever the case is, or even like your career to like your personal value, but it, it can get challenging. The one thing, like the good parts of it, I can say is that because I've been able to live on so little, I know that once I do have money, like my ability to manage said money is going to be a lot greater than it would have had I just started out with like a six figure salary. And so that's really helpful for me. And I think that the thing that sort of made that more challenging, I think a lot of people gave me side eyes through this whole process is I was very intentional about not going and getting a part-time job or hustling to do X, Y, and Z. Like I, I very much believed in what I was doing. I knew that at some point it was going to take off and I didn't want to put that additional strain on myself of you're building this whole organization alone, but also four days a week, go and work at this job that you care nothing about, that you know you're going to hate being there during that time. Like that to me just wasn't a good use of my energy. And so to me, I had to make that decision of like, if you believe in this and you want other people to believe in it like you gotta have this you're gonna have to sacrifice and I think that's one of the biggest things with entrepreneurship that people glamorize this hustle and uh, all these celebrities which y'all please stop doing that because these people are not they don't get it they're so detached from what is actually happening that like no but we glamorize that so much that people think that entrepreneurship equals a fast track way to make money and celebrity and this, that, and the other. And that is not the case. Like you have to sacrifice so much to have your own, to build your own, start your own, et cetera. That, and I tell my students this all the time, like it's actually the opposite. You can go and get a corporate job and you can have money right away. But when you start a business, you're going to be in the hole for quite a while while you build this thing up. And then once it does take off, then absolutely it's going to be great. But you can't go into entrepreneurship with this mindset of like, I'm doing it. So I can be rich like yeah but no like that's not how it works right it's really challenging for you you could set goals but you it's really challenging for you to see ahead yeah and what it looks like and where you're going to be in say a year or two years or in your case four years yeah and I would say, you know, especially for black and brown folks, like it, it's a little bit different because we don't have those networks, that visibility, that direct sort of can't do a friends and family round of fundraising like that is not those aren't realities for our people. And so it is it is just about, again, having those honest conversations about what to truly expect and what you're going to have to be responsible for and take care of in order to get to that point. And so I'm, I'm, I always try to at least be an open book when it comes to that stuff, because I do not want to disillusion people and be like, oh, well, you did it in four years. It's like, I got lucky. But don't think that those four years were not an extreme challenge the entire time. Like, it looks good on the surface, but no, honey, nah. Like, I quit my job two and a half years ago, and it's just been like a roller cup. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Some of this work I did on the side, but when you're doing it full time, it seems like, oh my gosh, like I know what I want to do and it's going to be great and I have all the support and I ha I know what I'm, what kind of work I'm going to be doing, but things just change. So, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you have to be really like self-motivated. That can be really challenging to like uh, yourself do things. Yeah, you kind of talked about some things that if you were speaking to someone that would, would be interested in being an entrepreneur, do, do you recommend it? What's your thoughts on that? That's a loaded question. There's a couple different ways to look at it. If you have a full-time job right now and you have security and stability, start with your business as a side hustle. Always. Build dual incomes. Build it up to the point where you can actually leave. You got reserves on 
deck, you got emergency funds, you're leveraging the connections and resources from this job that you have. Like that's what I was able to sort of hit the ground running is because I knew in January I was leaving my job in May. And so from January to May, it was all about what do I need to do to be able to sort of siphon off resources to really understand the landscape, to build my whole network of folks in the background so that when I, you know, sever this connection, I can not have this lull of, oh my God, what am I going to do? But like be able to very easily transition into this, this life cycle of entrepreneurship. And so that includes saving money again, uh, reaching out to folks and going to networking events, like all of those things. So I think until you have sort of that safety net built where you feel confident enough to go out and that you already have clients, you have a waiting list, like you have the things in place that, okay, I can do this for at least a year and get by. My mindset when I left corporate America was I can always come back. Corporate America is gonna be here, I'll have more skills after trying this thing than I would when I was still here. So I wouldn't say give up completely and and run yourself into the ground because it's entrepreneurship or bust, but like build a solid strategic plan that will allow you, you know, again, to operate for at least a year or two. And then if it doesn't work out again, now you have 10 more things to put on your resume that you know how to do now to go back into corporate America. So that's the first thing as far as like just the feasibility, like, is it the right thing for you to do? I think the second thing is a lot of people start these businesses that they think people want. People don't want that. (laughs) So I think you have to really do the research and have those customer conversations and do focus groups and do everything that you can to validate that you have customers because just because you want it doesn't mean that somebody else wants it just because you recognize a gap in the market doesn't mean that people are going to easily flock to this solution that you create and so I think it, it has to do a lot about research as well and just understand it build for what people want not what you think they want I think those are sort of the two sides that you really have to weigh before you go into entrepreneurship and then C is just are you stable enough are you secure enough to handle being an entrepreneur because there's all the hard stuff, the hard skills and the finances and the planning and all of that. But then there's your mental, physical, spiritual capacity and ability. It's a lot. Like it's a lot to have to only depend on yourself and motivate yourself. If you're a shy person having to be the face of your company and network and do, are you actually ready for that? And so the first two years of running the organization, the end of the year, both years was so depressed. I was like, I don't even know what's happening. I was burnt out. I was so, so, so tired of doing so much work and not seeing a return on it that it started to mess with my mental health. And so I had to start going to a therapist to really just talk through like, why is this so important? What am I trying to prove? What is, you know, what are some of these barriers? What are the, what's giving me anxiety and, and get myself back to a place where I had to reprioritize. Okay, cool. The cool thing about being an entrepreneur is I don't have anybody uh, holding me accountable. If there is a day where I feel just completely overwhelmed, it's okay for me to take a day off. If it turns into a week, it's okay for me to take a week off. Making sure that you have sort of that space to build in for yourself to handle the business side of things, but also managing your personal. The thing that I always like come back to is if I can't be my best self, I can't be anything for anybody else. So if I have a whole bunch of blockages and channels and anxiety and I'm stressed out, me coaching people, that's all they're going to get is my anxiety and fear and doubt. But when I'm free flowing and when I'm able to like relax and be, again, operating in my gifts and know, be confident in, in how I'm moving, it's a lot better session with the folks that I'm working with once I'm to that point. And so I think that is another point that has to be factored in. For sure. It's like this foundation that you have to create is so important just knowing that when you get into it everything that you're imagining is not likely to happen you're not aware of the many unknowns that will and just there's no way to be completely ready for it be aware of it yep new experiences new feelings and you know i wouldn't trade this experience to not have this experience to be sitting in like a corporate job that I hated, but it ain't easy. It is not easy at all. It is, but it, again, it is empowering. And I think if you, you can a understand why you're doing it, what are you, what are you doing this for? What's the end goal? 
are you in this just because you want money? Are you in it because you want to help people? And then on top of that, what's your backup plan? Like if you go six months down the road and you're like, okay, I'm not making no money. I don't have no clients. What's the plan? Are you okay with pivoting? Are you okay with shutting shop down and going back to work for a while while you figure it out? And so I, I don't think enough people go into, they go into entrepreneurship, just like you said, thinking it's going to work, thinking I got this, figured it all out. But when the rubber hits the road and when you run into that brick wall and it's like, oh crap, what am I going to do now? Like, I don't have a backup plan. So I think you just have to know what, what you're in it for. And you know, what are those, if this doesn't work, then if then, okay, cool. I can go here. I can do that. All right. Like it's, it's, it's planning for sure. One other thing that I'll say that I tell people that are considering going into entrepreneurship, but don't really have sort of a strong ethos as to why for black and brown folks, we start businesses all the time. Do those businesses grow? No, ma'am. No, sir. Not a thing. I think they say 95% of all specifically black owned businesses are micro businesses, meaning they have less than five employees. So realistically, if we're really talking about this ecosystem and community building and empowerment and economic development, the best thing that we could do with those skills that we want to start our own business with, look in the market. I can guarantee you there is a small black or brown owned business doing something similar that could use your skill set, your talent, your abilities, use you to help them grow their companies. You'll have a much broader stake there than you would starting from scratch and waiting 10 years to get to that same point that now they're at, where now you are one employee and you don't have the resources to build. So I always tell folks before you like jump off this cliff, look around, see who else is doing it, see how you can help them in their mission, become a stakeholder there. But most times our folks are just like so excited about the idea. It's just like, let me get it started. And it's like, you would do more by helping something that's already there because then we do start to get to those unemployment rates. We start to get to the economic development. We start to get to building teams and building wealth. And so that's always another thing that I offer folks is just like, please don't, I usually say in the nonprofit space, please do not start another nonprofit. There's 10 million of us out here struggling. Join a team. Yeah. And I think it's maybe also that pride of creating something on your own, but I'm telling y'all, if you really have an idea, having people around you to do it with, it'll be so much better. It'll be so much easier. It'll be just, you know, just having a community. We all know that it's so important. Just having like that support system is so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Graymatterexperience.com with an A on uh, social channels. We are at Gray Matter EXP. And then for my personal, I am at Baskin Robbins on every channel that's uh, also have a website and it's just BrittanyRobbins.com. Check me out. I have a lot more stuff that I'll be announcing later this fall as another opportunity has sort of presented itself to further help black and brown communities, but this time in the adult space. So super, super excited about being able to uh, continue this work. And like I said, y'all, entrepreneurship ain't for the faint of heart, but when you got it and you know that that's your calling, you got to stick with it and you got to do what it takes because people need what you have to offer. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm so excited to see what you're putting out into the world. And I, I'm, I'm so thankful for your energy and your gifts. That you I too, Shireen. You too. You're, um, I, I'm always looking forward to what you're going to do next and really just appreciate your ability to build community and highlight voices and have really tough conversations and talk about sort of that behind scenes of, of what's going on so kudos to you yeah thank you all so much for watching um we do this every single week come join me if you want to have a conversation yeah bye Peace.